first thing we're going to need, I'm going to, I'm going to explain what we have for supplies here. We will be using vellum and this is um, Stampin' Up's cardstock vellum. We used to carry a light vellum and a cardstock vellum and the cardstock is a thicker weight. It's a, a it's a really lovely weight and uh, it just holds up better to a lot of techniques and it looks great embossed if you run it through um, an embossing folder in the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. Looks great. But we're using a different technique tonight so you need that. Um, you'll need some basic white cardstock or it doesn't have to be basic white, but I think the colors pop on white a whole lot better. Let's see, you will need your Stampin' Blends, an assortment of colors, and really, you know, it's all about just trying different colors together. Uh, I might show you Wink of Stella added to this afterwards. It's really, it's actually, it looks cool on the card, but it looks really, really cool when you're in the process of making it, just because the way the alcohol reacts to the Wink of Stella. Now, actually, let me point out what this is. This says alcohol added. So this Wink of Stella br um, brush was nearing the end of its life. I couldn't get enough out to paint with it, but there was still some left in the barrel. So when that happens, you can unscrew this let me just show you, try not to make a mess. And if you just pull this little bladder off here or whatever it's called, um, it's not a bladder, it's a, I don't know, gasket, something like that. If you just pull that off and you just put a couple of drops uh, or a little bit of uh, alcohol in there and you shake it up, then that uh, reactivates some of the, uh, the wink of Stella that might be dried on the inside of the tube or it just gives you some extra life and it's it's uh it's a good way to you know make use of this technique so uh, you will also need alcohol and not just any alcohol not the alcohol you're drinking uh, in case you are drinking while you're watching me I just took a sip of water it, it's just water really just water um, but you will need some isopropyl alcohol and not just the regular probably 70% that you have in your cupboards. You need 91% 90 or higher. It really has to be a high percentage. So I picked this up at Walgreens because I couldn't find it at Walmart and I couldn't find it at Shaw's. I found where it lived at Walmart and where it lived at Shaw's, but I think especially in these days of a pandemic, it's kind of hard to find the higher concentration of stuff. Um, so I found this at Walgreens. I also found some online that was 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. The higher the concentration, the easier stuff spreads. It really will not spread. Uh, you can't use this technique with a 70%. It just doesn't work. Um, I haven't found a ton of difference between the 91 and 99.9 .9, other than that this 99.9 .9 dries a little bit faster so either way um, you will need a receptacle for the alcohol uh, because you don't want to be using it in and out of the bottle because you might taint it with your ink um, I'm just going to use this palette that I've had forever I was using a little uh, I use it for lobster butter a little um, little glass container uh, just any small container that's gonna hold the alcohol uh, will work so um, now I, I did buy a bunch of these little pipettes uh, and by a bunch I mean a hundred um, I bought them on Amazon for not much money and when I have um, a class coming up in July or actually it's an open house any of you want one you're, you're more than happy to take a couple because I don't need a hundred. But I found that this is just, it, it, this is pretty easy to get the alcohol out of the bottle rather than pouring it. And especially since these wells are fairly tiny, you can also use this to drop alcohol onto your project, but I don't need that much. So, isn't it cute? Anyway, a hundred for like five bucks. 
So you are welcome to some next time you see me. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide what colors. So on my sample color or card, I had used um, Melon Mambo and Daffodil Delight. I think that's what this is. Yes. When you're using the blends, you'll probably want to stick to the darker of the two. So blends come in pairs, a light and a dark. And so typically I just use the dark. Now, if it's a darker color to begin with, like Night of Navy or Misty Moonlight, Blackberry Bliss, you can use either one because they are dark by nature. But typically you want to use the darker ones because they give more vibrancy to the card. And you can see in here, it looks like there's a little orange, but that's just where the yellow and the pink mixed. You can use any number of colors. Uh, let's see, what are we going to do first? I need to do one other project first. I need to start one because I want to give it a little bit of time to dry. So I'm going to bring this piece of, of vellum here and I'm going to fill up this whole piece of vellum. And I'm really going to be largely using just two colors. And this is really just scribbling. Some little pieces, some big pieces. It doesn't have to be squares, can be circles. Just fill it up that way. That was Melon Mambo, and now I'm going to be using some Granny Apple Green, which I love Granny Apple Green. So we're filling in the spots here. Oops, I, I try not to do what I just did and overlap them, but I guess I got a little carried away. And I'm gonna put a little bit of a hint of some of the daffodil just in a couple places in here. Not much. You'll see why in a little bit, why I'm adding this color. But And so now, here's how you make the magic. Am I from New England, the Cape? I am not from the Cape. My accent is a Maine accent. It's actually probably more New Hampshire, but um, those Cape people and Massachusetts people have a much stronger accent. But I am from New England, that is for sure, as are a lot of people that are on this, uh, this thing. So it's nice to have you wherever you're chiming in from. Are you one of my Canadian friends? I think you might be. So I'm gonna start with, this is an old aqua painter. You can certainly use a water, water painter, which are our new aqua painters, that they're the replacement. You can use a regular paintbrush, whatever you want. I've just chosen to kind of designate this. I didn't even fill it with alcohol. I just designate um, the tip of this as my alcohol paint. So I'm going to dip in. I'm gonna start with my light colors. And I am just dabbing wherever I see that color. And then I'm going to bring in just a cloth and I white, want to wipe it. I don't want to put um, yellow ink back into my well. Well, I guess I can put it into the well if I don't change the colors. But now I'm going to change colors. So I'm going to go to my greens next. So I'm going to just plop, 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 plop. Now what some people do here is they um, only do one color at a time. The bigger the piece, probably the, the smarter that is. This is a fairly small piece. And I'm getting quite a bit of it wet here. Hi Debbie, nice to have you with us too. And Where's my other, okay, so another tool is a straw. And so it just kind of moves the ink a little bit. But you can wait until you've got all the ink on there if you want, uh, all the alcohol on there if you want. Some people like to tape it down as they're working here. Um, because the cardstock is going to curl because it's getting wet, even though it's, it's vellum, but um, vellum cardstock will curl as well. And if you want to move the ink, you can. I don't mind it if 
actually if I don't actually blow on it at all. Sometimes if you blow on it, and especially if you have the the um, the one that's not quite as potent, the 91%, uh, it takes a little bit longer to dry, and so you can move it around a lot more. Sometimes if you blow really hard, you get this kind of splatter effect. So I have just a couple of spots where it's um, still a little bit wet. The more I blow on it, though, the more it um, it does dry. Now I can hit this with my heat tool a little bit. I'm going to move my well of alcohol out. Heat and alcohol, what could go wrong? Just a little bit. And I can still see a little bit of wet there, but I'm going to set this aside for right now. But before I do that, let me just bring in a piece of totally white and show you how vibrant that looks on there. It's just kind of a cool background all by itself. Oh, so Ruth, if you're in Florida right now, I bet you're warmer than we are here. It is 57 degrees here. What is it in Florida? Not that I really want to ask <laughs> because I'm cold. I've got my sweatshirt on. All right, I'm going to bring in another piece of uh, of paper here. Now, I only used a couple of colors there, but you can really use quite a few colors. Let's go back here, and I'm going to use these four colors. I'm going to use Highland Heather. So this is the dark Highland Heather. And I'm not going to actually fill up this whole card. I'm just going to do a little bit. And go back with my Melon Mambo. So I don't have all the colors yet of Stampin' Blends. And every single time I use them, I think, I need more, I need more. So I got to get more. So notice some of my splotches are bigger than others. And that will change the effect that's on your cardstock. It's kind of fun. I'm just filling some of these spots right here. All right. And now we'll do it again. I'll bring back my bring back my alcohol here. Again, I'll start with a light. And I'm just pouncing. And let me show you what I mean by um, splattering. See, you can really blow it quite a bit. The more alcohol you put on there, um, the more movement you can get, which can be good or bad dep depending on what you're trying to do. But you also run the risk of having it curl a lot more too. You just want to make sure your brush is fairly clean between colors so that you're not muddying them. It's okay if they combine a little bit, but you don't want them to combine too much. And so my last color would be the Misty Moonlight. That well is almost dry. That's how fast this alcohol disappears or dissipates. And I can see that I... I, had, I said I wasn't going to fill up this whole thing, and I didn't, but I did go all the way down here, so I think I do want to go all the way up at the top up here. So I'm just going to scribble a little bit more up here and go up there with my Misty Moonlight. So blowing on it also helps it to dry. So you can see right here 
that my colors got a little bit muddy. And so, you know, you may want to try to avoid that. Now I had this wink of Stella out and I'm going to see if I can make this show up on camera for you, but I'm not sure I can. So I'm going to just drop a little bit and you can also flick. Actually, I like the flicking too. But let me see, bring this up. I don't know if you can see this, but it's like it's dancing. See this spot up here? Can you see how it, it's like it's dancing? It's really, really cool. Like it won't keep dancing. That's just the alcohol evaporating. But it is so cool while, while it is dancing. So this just adds more sparkle. Now the Wink of Stella will take a little bit longer to dry. But it is it is really very cool. You've got I've got this splattery effect over the top of this. So we're going to let that dry for just a little bit and I want to show you what some of this looks like against different colors of cardstock. So, let me set this aside for a moment. Let me bring back this piece that we had earlier. So, we had used Granny Apple Green. So, here it is against white. Here it is against green. So, the green sort of melts into it a lot more. It kind of brings out the yellow though. Let's see if we have a piece of daffodil delight here that I can put it up against. I do. Again, a different look. And let's see what it looks like against Melon Mambo. A pretty muted look again. Again, personally, I really like it against the white just because it really uh, it really pops. So I need to find the piece of cardstock that right here. Uh, that's not it. I cut a piece of cardstock in advance so I wouldn't slow down the show. That only works when I am not pawing through stuff. You now we can cut another one. All right, so here, let's cut another piece of cardstock. I'm going to create a card with a Melon Mambo base. And I've already cut another layer that is just a quarter of an inch smaller um, in all the directions. So let's put that on there. Okay. Now with your piece of vellum, you want to actually back it with the card. I could put it right here, but in order for it to not curl, I want to really secure it very, very well. And it just works out better if you secure it to a layer um, that is, you know, underneath it. So I could put this on a white layer, and then mount it to a little black layer that goes around it. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and, you know, I probably, the problem is I used the wrong piece of vellum. That's why, that's why I don't have a piece that's the right size. So let's go ahead and just, I'm gonna cut this piece of vellum down. And I happen to know that the piece I'm trying to use is, four and a quarter long and three wide, which this is. Yep, that's about right. So that was just a little off. And I need a piece of white that is the same amount. So four and a quarter by three wide. 
Now, usually when you are mounting vellum on top of cardstock, you want to use your adhesive sparingly because it shows through. But I found it really doesn't show through on this. I'm going to use my stamp and seal. Now, this didn't curl too much. You know, again, if you're using a lot of, a, a lot and a lot, a lot of alcohol and getting it really wet, it will curl more. So I'm just going around all the edges just to hold it down securely. So I have that little layer going on. Look how vibrant and pretty that is. I love this technique, it's so, so fun. I can lay that right down here. Now, one of the things that I, uh, I did before class was I took this label punch which I lo absolutely love, tailored tag, or, you know, I, I always forget the name of this punch, and they don't, write the, they don't write it on it. So I punched out a piece of, I stamped a piece of white, and uh, I, I punched a piece of Melon Mambo out, and I made this tag, and I can see now that it got a little crooked in my, hunt for things. Do you see how I've done this though? This tag is the same measurement as the white piece. So how am I getting it to look like that? Anybody? Who's raising their hand first? It's okay, you don't have to. I'm going to show you right now. Bring in your paper cutter and you cut the tag in half. And so see, I've cheated. I just I've just moved these two halves. They were like this and I just scooted them out a little bit. I attached them so I have a a nice little tag with a border. That's a nice little cheat for you, freebie. And so I can just put this right here. And I've got a lovely little card. But wait, there's more. There's other things you can do. Remember this paper? The True Love Designer Series paper that is soon to disappear? This paper um, goes out with the mini catalog. What I did was I took one of the designs and I cut and I colored in the petals and the um, leaves and the centers with my Stampin' Blends and cut them out. And I could adhere them. And I didn't know if I wanted to do two or if I wanted to do just one. Hmm. Let's see, do I wanna do, I think I definitely like the two flowers down here. I will adhere those. Usually I make a sample card before I come on and I did not this time. I just decided to see what worked. I just made pieces. And what am I gonna do here? I think I could pop this up. Oop, that's, that's upside down, I think. I think I want it to go this way. Yeah, let's do that. Let's use some dimensionals on this piece right here. I grabbed my mini dimensionals. Sometimes it's whatever I grab first that gets the win. this right edge, white edge right up next to the other white edge. 
This happy birthday comes from Happy Thoughts, which is also going away shortly. I'm not going to put this on dimensionals, though. I'm just going to tack this down. And so you have a very girly card right there. So that's one card. For my other card, I'm going to bring this sample piece back in here, and it's... The Wink of Stella is still a little bit, the sparkles came off a little bit for me, but we're going to make it work anyway. I'm going to get a note card out. So these note cards come in a pack of 20, come with envelopes, and they're already scored. They are great value. I'm going to fold that in half. And I can, I can tack this right directly down. It is going on white after all. And that's what I actually did on this particular card as well. I just need to know which orientation I want it to go. Now notice, I, I, what I'm noticing is this note card when I folded it in half. This front side right now, the lip is showing the back side. I want to flip that over. I don't want to have an unfinished side showing. So I'm going to do this. Now it is pretty flat. I could probably get away with not putting on as much adhesive here. Let's just see. I'm going to show you when I, here's my adhesive. Uh, I just scratched my card. Let's see. You cannot, my adhesive are down here. You cannot notice that adhesive, which is great. So go ahead and use that seal to tack it down. You can use it all over or just in the corners. I'm just going to line this up here. Could have put a, a nice little black border would have looked nice around that too but speaking of black i'm going to bring in my little box of so on tuesday or maybe thursday i can't remember which day i posted about the many messages and so what i did was i cut out i i embossed white on black and cut them out So I have those options, and this one says, hooray, it's your birthday, and then I've got some black on white, and so anytime I want to just look through my, look through my cards, or, or look through my sentiments, I can have a sentiment ready to go. Oh, I kind of like this happy birthday. I'm going to stick with happy birthday. I always need birthday. So let's go ahead and stick with the birthday ones. Oh, I grabbed the big dots this time, the big dimensionals. I never know what I'm going to get when I reach over there. So I do, I am noticing that this is curling up in the middle a little bit. So what am I going to do about that? I think. Let's see if we can get a glue dot not to show. I think because of the ink that's down here, it will be fine anyways. Sometimes the glue dots, I think, will show more, are more apt to show just because they have a thickness to them. All right, so I'm just trying to take the cover off of this. There we go. And now it's tacked down. And you cannot see that glue dot either. Win, win, win. And now I've just got this happy birthday that can go right over here. And it's probably a little hard for you to see, but let me bring it up to the camera a little bit more and see if I can get that sparkle to shine. See it? There we go. 
All right, we're gonna do one more. Hadn't planned to do this, but let's do it anyway, because this is so much fun. It really, really is. I won't make a card out of this. I'm just gonna show you the technique. So what colors am I gonna use? I'm gonna pull out, let's see, this is Bermuda Bay. And let's have my granny apple green and let's let's go with my misty moonlight for this. So kind of greeny watery colors. Greeny blue. Just going to put some splotches in here. This is the Misty Moonlight. All right, here we go again. I still, oh, I'm gonna need a little bit more alcohol. I'm gonna go ahead and use the 91% and show you that it really does work, you know, just as well for all intents and purposes. It will be great for you to use. You don't have to order online unless you don't wanna go out. All right, get my aqua painter back, my brush back. Just dabbing on here. Oh, I told you I was gonna show you another method that you could do. I mean, you could, if you don't mind big drops, you could take this And you get bigger drops if you drop it this way. Oops, that was that was a little too big. So when I'm doing it this way, I'm getting some drops, and you can see it spreading. Oops, and I'm out of alcohol. Let's grab a little bit more just for that one spot. All right, that's another way you can do it. And it's really quite wet now, so this is probably going to crinkle and wrinkle quite a bit. I'm actually going to get my piece of paper back here. And now it's so wet that I can definitely... Blow some more. And the wetter you get it, the more diluted the blends will be. So the lighter it will it will show up now again this is very wet so it's going to take a little while to dry which was not really my intention that wasn't the thing i was really going to show you so now i have to do it again so i can show you what i intended to show you i'll just do a little bit you guys if you have not tried this it really is fun I feel like an artist when I'm doing this because I'm making something like there's no art. I didn't have to draw anything here. It just is, it turns out the way it turns out. So you have a little bit more control when you're dabbing than when you're dropping big droplets of water. And it doesn't take nearly as long to dry. Blowing on it does speed up the drying process. So you can see how you still have some veins in there, which I love that look. So this one was so wet. Let me get a piece of 
cardstock to show you against. This piece is still wet, but you can see how how light it is, but it's still, it's a very muted color and it's really pretty. This would make a beautiful um, watery background. Once it's dry, but you can see that it is curling. Uh, you can, again, your stamp and seal will allow it to, to lay pretty flat after a bit anyways. But your colors are more vibrant when you use less alcohol. Also, when you're using less alcohol, you get a greater chance that you get this veining to occur because they're not overlapping, so they're not mixing so much. All right, the, what I wanted to show you was, and I don't have a two-way glue pen anymore, and I don't believe we sell it. Oh wait, I do have one. I, didn't, I don't think we sell this anymore though. It's not in the catalog. It might be online, but I don't think it is. So you can use this, or you can use the Tombow Mono liquid glue as well and all you do all you need is a really fine fine tip or a piece of it let me let me give you uh i'm gonna get my silicone mat out here just a second that's not it okay here it is get my silicone mat out Keep it in the package so it doesn't get all glittery when I'm using glitter. Now your adhesive is not going to stick to this if you get it on it. I'm actually going to make a little puddle over here because I don't want a, a thick stream of glue coming out. What I want though is I'm going to try to go along some of this vein. I'm just I'm just scratching a very light little light little area here and spreading and some of it's thicker than others I'm not going to take the time to do a lot of this I just want to do a little bit to show you what's going on here now I'm going to take my gold leafing remember that stuff's messy so anything you care about you don't want to have to clean up. Move out of the way. I'm going to get my gold leafing out. And I'm going to open it very carefully so it doesn't go everywhere. Ah! I can even pick up some of these bigger pieces. Just lay it right on there. But usually, this is what I do. I dump it upside down. Okay? And it sticks to the glue. Now, I found that when I'm using the Tombow, I want to let that dry for just a little bit before I start removing the excess. Otherwise, I can probably, you know, just wipe it off if it's not dry yet. So I'm going to very gently rub along here and that just rubs the excess off and you can see that you have gold veins now I had hoped to actually have the artistically inked uh, the paper that goes with that um, suite with me just like I'd hope to have the stamp set this week so we could compare the look that the stamp gives you with the look that this technique gives you however both were on back order so I didn't receive them uh, I received the dies but that was about it but anyway this gold leafing just it mimics what's in that designer series paper as well so that's just a adds a pretty a little a nice little element to it Again, you, you can use any kind of glue, um, this kind of two-way glue, if you still have some of that, that works nicely, I guess it's, you know, because it's more of a pen. Um, you can, it's more of a pen that you can use, so you have a little bit more control over it. But So that's what I have for you tonight. Let me just bring back all my projects. 
Next week will be a, um, a taped or pre-recorded because I'm going to be camping. I'll be joining in online because uh, I'll be I'll have internet access, but I can't bring my stuff with me camping because my setup is nice here, but it, it's not going to work in a camper. So anyway, um, that will be next week. And I think I have not for sure determined, but I think I might show you this card that I totally got from another demonstrator. And I will have that name for you next week. Uh, but it's on my phone and my phone is currently recording me. But um, I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up very well, but there's a, a blossom in the background here. This background is made with watercolor pencils. And the best part though for me is this vellum overlay. It's just a piece of torn vellum cardstock that has been embossed in white. So that's what we'll be doing next week. So until then, go ahead, go out and buy some alcohol. This kind of alcohol because you don't want, who knows what kind of cards you're gonna make if you buy the other alcohol. And uh, <laughs> go ahead and try this technique with your blends. If you don't have blends, give them a try. I will be doing this. I will have this available to try at my open house in July for those of you that are local. So thank you for joining me tonight, and I will see you next week, sort of. Have a good weekend, everybody.